And now coming to you live from our studios in Tipton, Indiana, it's This Weekend with Jacob Pyle for Saturday, December 13th, 2014. And now here's the guy that makes every weekend a special one, your host on This Weekend, Jacob Pyle. Hello everybody, welcome to another edition of This Weekend. I'm Jacob Pyle, glad you can be with us. Do you like to travel? I know I do. Well, today we are going to take a look at different traditions that most people in different countries do in order to celebrate Christmas. Each holiday celebrates Christmas differently, and if there's one thing that is very similar in each one of these situations, it does involve gifts in one way or another. Have you ever wondered about how Christmas is celebrated around the world? Let me be your guy as we take a trip to three various countries around the world and we'll talk about them. First to Mexico. At midnight on Christmas Day, many families place the figure of baby Jesus in their nativity scene as a symbolic representation of Christmas as a whole. In the center and south of Mexico, children receive gifts around Christmas Eve. And on January 6th, they celebrate the Feast of the Epiphany, which, according to tradition, the three wise men brought gifts to Bethlehem for Jesus Christ who then fills the children's shoes with candles, oranges, tangerines, nuts, and sugar cane, and sometimes money or gold. For the three wise men gave baby Jesus gold for his future. Now in China, some things are similar to nature, such as sending cards, exchanging gifts, and hanging stockings. And now here we are, back home in the U.S., where Christmas traditions are very similar. We put up Christmas trees here every year, along with Santa visits at local shopping malls wrapping presents and putting them throughout the tree and opening them, along with having a traditional dinner with turkey, stuffing, ham, roast beef, puddings, potatoes, squash, roasted vegetables, and cranberry sauce. Mm. Other traditions include a special Christmas Eve church service, candlelight services, and sometimes a nativity play reenacting the birth of Jesus. So as we celebrate this special day in a couple of weeks, always remember what true meaning this holiday is for us. Next week, I'll be taking you with me to an activity scene in front of the courthouse here in Tipton as I recite the story of Jesus' birth. We are going to take a break for our first video postcard coming to us from the beautiful town of Sharpsville, Indiana. We'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. And now it's time for a Christmas story. This story is called The Gold Wrapping Paper. And I think you'll like it once you see what I mean. Here we go, The Gold Wrapping Paper. Once upon a time, there was a man who worked very hard just to keep food on the table for his family. This particular year, a few days before Christmas, he punished his little five-year-old daughter after learning that she had used up the family's only roll of expensive gold wrapping paper. As money was tight, he became even more upset when on Christmas Eve he saw that the child had used all of the expensive gold paper to decorate one shoe box she had put under the Christmas tree. He also was concerned about where she had gotten money to buy what was in the shoe box. Nevertheless, the next morning the little girl, filled with excitement, brought the gift box to her father and said, 
This is for you, Daddy. As he opened the box, the father was embarrassed by his earlier overreaction, now regretting how he had punished her. But when he opened the shoe box, he found it was empty, and again his anger flared. Don't you know, young lady, he said harshly, when you give someone a present, there's supposed to be something inside the package? The little girl looked up at him with sad tears rolling her from her eyes and whispered, Daddy, it's not empty. I blew kisses into it until it was all full. The father was crushed. He fell on his knees and put his arms around his precious little girl. He begged her to forgive him for his unnecessary anger. An accident took the life of the child only a short time later. It is told that the father kept this little gold box by his bed for all the years of his life. Whenever he was discouraged or faced difficult problems, he would open the box, take out an imaginary kiss, and remember the love of this beautiful child who had put it there. In a very real sense, each of us has been given an invisible golden box filled with unconditional love and kisses from our children, family, friends, and God. There's no precious possession anyone could hold. All right, we're going to take a break now and with for another video postcard. And this one today comes to us from uh, the beautiful town of Greentown. We'll be back. <laughs> Welcome back. Who here is a Paul McCartney fan? I know I am. This song I'm about to sing now is a great Christmas song that was done by Paul McCartney. The song is called Wonderful Christmas Time, and I hope you enjoy it. The mood is right. Spirits up. Here tonight, and that's enough. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time. The party's on, the feeling's here. That only comes this time of year. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Simply having a wonderful Christmas time The choir of children sing this song Ding dong, ding dong, ding dong Simply having a wonderful Christmas time Simply having a wonderful Christmas time The word is out about the town so Lift the glass, don't look down 
simply having a wonderful Christmas time. The choir of Party's on, spirits up, we're here tonight, on oh, that enough, simply having a wonderful Christmas time, we're simply having a wonderful Christmas time. Right, spirits up, we're here tonight, oh and that's enough, we're simply having a wonderful Christmas time, simply having a wonderful Christmas time, simply having a wonderful Christmas time. After the break, Jacob Pyle has this week's final thought. Don't go away! Hi, I'm Jacob Pyle, host of our new show, This Weekend with Jacob Pyle. This Weekend with Jacob Pyle is a creative show where we feature ideas, stories, and other great ideas. We are look and we are looking for additional help for this program. If you are interested in wanting to take part in our new show, please let me know on Facebook. We are always looking for special guests, and we're even looking for a special contributor. If you have somebody that might be interested, please let me know right here on Facebook. We'll be more than happy to have you on my show. And now, here again is Jacob Pyle. And now it's time for this week's final thought. And this week's final thought has a lot to do with autism. What is autism, you may wonder? Autism is a neurodevelopmental disorder characterized by impaired social interaction, verbal and nonverbal communication. If you have autism, it's one of the most biggest things in the world people deal with. It can be a struggle sometimes, but it is darn right worth it at the end. Everybody in this world has a talent of some sort, whether they have autism or not. I'm one of the very many people that has autism, but that doesn't stop me from doing what I love to do the most. So if you have autism, don't let that stop you from doing what you do. The world we live in has endless, endless possibilities, no doubt about it. But what's really amazing is how we can share this opportunity with friends and people like you. Before we go, a program note. We are going to be having a special Christmas edition of this weekend next week, where we will have some stories shared, songs to sing, and even a special guest or two. Join us for that next week here on this weekend. And with that, that's all for this edition of this weekend. Thank you for joining us. I'm Jacob Pyle, and until next week, from all of us here this weekend, good night. And God bless my friends. This is Trent Byers speaking for this weekend. This program has been pre-recorded.